بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي أمين يا رب العالمين before I can start today's khutbah, I'll just actually want to make some du'as because uh, I don't want to forget them. If I remember, I will make these du'as at the end also. Um, but there are so many requests for the du'as. First is that um, uh, just a couple came to my office that their father, Brother Fatih Ahmad Sheikh, uh, who was 87 year old, he passed away. Rahimahullah, may Allah SWT forgive him. Um, and they have requested for the dua. And second, our uh, president, Brother Muhammad Ramadan, his father was diagnosed with cancer uh, in Pakistan and he's leaving tomorrow. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him shifa kamil ajala and make it easy for the family. Ameen ya Rabb. Um, third, uh, grandmother of sister Tanya uh, passed away. She was battling with cancer. Uh, Sister Tanya is actually a wife of our uh, active community member, Brother Hawladar, and their grandmother passed away in Bangladesh. She was also battling with cancer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive her sins. And the last dua request I have is actually for Brother Nasir Ahmad, who is a friend of Brother Abdul Hay. He is battling with cancer, and the family have requested for the dua of Shifa Kamil Ajala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all the brothers and sisters who are struggling with their health, whether it's physical health or spiritual health, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fix those issues, give them shifa kamil ajala. Ameen, Ya Rabb. And the brothers and sisters in Muslim community, global Muslim community who have passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive their sins, elevate their status in Jannah, and give us all Jannah for those, inshallah ta'ala. So now today we're going to discuss a very important issue. You might think it's related to youth, Shabab, but actually it is related to all of us, and that is of Al Kasl, laziness. And um, you might think that when we speak about laziness, it is uh, the feeling of not wanting to do something, even though you should be doing that. We're going to discuss about that, but actually laziness have so many different kinds, inshallah. And we'll speak about from the religious sense and from psychological perspective and how to solve that laziness. Um, you know, what is laziness? As I said, that the feeling of not wanting to do something, even though it's important for you, you should be doing that. But you don't want to do that because you are not getting that feeling. Um, like students, they might miss their assignment, although deadline is coming. That's because of lazy attitude. Um, going to a wedding party late, although you should, there is nothing which actually forces you to go to late. If they say dinner is at 7.30, you will go at 9 p.m. Uh, just because mentally we are lazy people. Similarly, you are constantly coming for salah late. You know, some people, they will come in the first rakah. As an imam, I see that some people, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them for coming in the masjid at least, but they will come in the fourth rakah all the time. Not in the first, not in the second, not in the third rakah, because they are somewhat lazy to come in the first rakah, to come at time. They will leave the house when the salah will start so that they can reach in the fourth rakah or even after salam. This is what we need to solve, inshallah ta'ala. You might think laziness is more related to psychology, why you have selected this Juma khutbah. But actually, if you see Quran, Allah spoke about laziness twice, at least to my limited knowledge. So if Allah spoke about something twice, it is important for us. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam spoke about al kasl laziness, many times in hadith. He actually asked dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, please protect me. I seek your refuge from being a lazy person. So it's an important topic for us Muslims and we cannot be lazy for these reasons. And actually I was just reading a book, uh, a famous book on Sirah, Nadratun Na'im Fi Makarim, Makarim Al Akhlaq Al Rasul Al Kareem on 12 volumes. And it was written by a group of scholars and even they would mention one of the negative traits which you can have is laziness. So let's start with that book inshallah and let's relate it to psychological fact inshallah. What we're going to discuss here, I'm going to give you the linguistic meaning of laziness in, in Islamic sense, then from the Quranic perspective, then from Hadith perspective, kinds of laziness and how to solve this issue, inshallah, from Islam and from psychological standpoint, inshallah. You know, some people are physically lazy and that's what we think about laziness. When we say, oh, you are lazy, I'm lazy. 
because we think laziness is only physical laziness, the person who doesn't want to move around. And that is the commonly understood type of laziness. But there's other kind of laziness. Our scholars have addressed this. So in Nadrat al naim they said, Al-Kasl uh, Naw'an. Al-Naw al-Awwal, Al-Kasl Badan. Al-Naw al-Thani, Al-Kasl al-Aql. They say one kind of laziness is laziness of phys physique. Physically, you are lazy. You don't want to move around. But second kind of laziness is mental laziness. You don't want to think for yourself. You will ask other people to do the thinking for you. And I will come to this later. We collectively as a Muslim community, we are mentally lazy. If you want a financial plan, we'll ask someone else to make financial plans for us because we are mentally lazy people. We cannot think long term. We will come to that inshallah. Let's just start. But before I can start telling you the meaning from Islamic perspective, one thing which I have seen, subhanAllah, when I spoke to different youth halakas about laziness, so I've seen people would say, uh, they would try to either blame creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would say, oh man, I'm too lazy. I was born in that way. No. Or they would say, maybe my, this family or this person from this family will be lazy because the parents are lazy. Or the people from Pakistan are lazy. The people of Egypt are la lazy. The people of Somalia are lazy. No, 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 no. Laziness is a thought. Everyone can have it. It does not have to do anything with your race. Even sometimes Muslims and non-Muslims, they can be lazy, they can be energetic. It does not have to do anything uh, with, with, with your background. You have to work towards get more energy, inshallah, and we'll talk about that, inshallah. Let's start with the linguistic meaning in the Islamic sense. What is laziness? Al-Kasl. So Imam Raghib al-Aswahani, a famous uh, linguistic person, uh, scholar, he says, Al-Kasl al-Tasakul amma la yambaghi tasakul an wa li ajli thalika saran mazmuman. He says, Laziness is a lack of energy and lack of enthusiasm of doing something of, of, of is lack of energy and lack of enthusiasm of doing something which is important. So you know that I have to do this, but you won't have that energy. You will be lacking in enthusiasm. This is what how he explained um, laziness. Just for example, if I have to give Jum'ah khutbah, this is extremely important. Three, four, five hundred people will be listening to me for next 30 minutes and I have to convey the message, message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I'm not preparing this, Friday morning came, I'm using social media, I'm wasting time. I'm mentally lazy person if I'm doing this because I have to prepare. This is important for me and I'm not taking this task as an important as it is. Then it will be considered as a lazy attitude. In the Quran, it's very interesting, very interesting. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about laziness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about twice. Laziness in the Quran, Allah brings laziness twice in the Quran. And very interestingly, both those times in Surah Tawbah and Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected laziness with a person who is being lazy in prayers. Very interesting. One place in Surah Tawbah, Allah says, وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاءِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كُسَالَى they don't come in salah except that they are in the state of laziness. So they pray salah while being a lazy person. Second, in Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, وَإِذْ قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالَى That uh, whenever they stand for salah, they stand in a state of laziness. يُرَعُونَ nas. They want to show off to people. They are not doing things from heart. That's the psyche of the lazy person who is praying salah. وَلَا يَسْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا They don't remember Allah except little. Because when you are praying salah, it's being in a state of laziness, it means you're not remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was asking myself that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, twice he used laziness in the Quran and both the times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected that with salah. That the people who pray salah, the bad people, they are being lazy in their prayer. There are so many other important things for us. But actually, if you ponder, if you reflect, you will get the idea why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have done this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have connected laziness with the salah twice in the Quran to show us one thing. That for a Muslim, the most important act of worship which he can do is salah. That will be the first thing you will be asked on the day of judgment. So it is the most important for any Muslim thing, for any Muslim to do. If you are being lazy in the most important thing of your life, then by default, you will be lazy in other things. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the best example. If you are lazy in salah, then you will be lazy in other things also. And this is our benchmark according to these, this usage of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, twice in the Quran subhanallah. Even in the hadith, even from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu there are two hadiths which I just want to share with you. Have a beautiful, beautiful understanding subhanallah. One hadith which is in Sahih Bukhari, it narrates and says, when you go to sleep, shaitan comes and he put three knot on the back of our head. Basically, Rasulullah sallallahu wanted to convey a specific message here. When we go to sleep, Allah's messenger says, shaitan will come and he will put three knot on the back of our head. More of a metaphorical speech. Remember this. First knot. And on, by the way, on the three knots, on those three knots, shaitan will going to say, Laylun tawilun farqud. Laylun tawilun farqud. Laylun tawilun farqud. Night is long, so stay asleep. No need to wake for Fajr. Even if you wake up, just put the alarm on the snooze. Just ask for five more minutes, ten more minutes. Laylun tawilun. Night is sleep. Night is long, so stay sleeping. Stay sleeping. This is what shaitan does. And Rasulullah actually says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if a person wakes up in the morning and leaves the bed and remembers Allah, the first knot is undone. And then he goes to the restroom and do wudu, the second knot is undone. And when he prays salah, when he prays salah, the third knot is undone. And then Rasulullah says this, this is the cross of hadith. If he does this, if he remembers Allah after waking up, if he does wudu and if he prays, the entire day he will have the energy. Ask those people who pray Fajr. They will tell you this. And if he doesn't do that, if he doesn't pray Fajr, if he ignores Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's voice, if he responds affirmatively to shaitan's call, and if he keeps sleeping, Rasulullah says, you will be lazy the entire day. Kaslan. And wallahi, the, the people who pray Fajr, even occasionally they will feel, they will compare their days to the rest of the days when they are not praying Fajr. That today was energetic, today was something different. Why? Rasulullah linked this to the laziness and energy. One more beautiful dua which Rasulullah actually taught to one of the companion Abu um, Abu Umama, he was one of the companion and this hadith is mentioned in many different books. So the hadith says that once Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered into a masjid and by the way, Abu Umama himself is narrating this hadith. So he says, Dakhala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam zata yawm in masjid. One day I was sitting in masjid and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered in the masjid. By the way, this was not the time for prayers. Remember this, this was not the time for prayer. So when you walk in, all of a sudden, one person is sitting in the masjid while it's not the prayer time. You are timing. And that was a person, Abu Umama, he was sitting in the masjid. فَقَالَ يَا أَبُوْ أُمَامَ Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Abu Umama, مَا لِي أَرَاكَ جَالِسًا فِي الْمَسْجِدِ فِي غَيْرِ وَقْتِ السَّلَةِ Why are you sitting in the masjid at this time? This is not the prayer time. Is there something wrong with you? So Abu Mama says, Qala wa ya Rasulullah. He says, anxiety and deaths. Anxiety and deaths. I cannot, I cannot uh, remove this. I am I'm worried for that. Too much worry, too much anxiety. Humum and duyun, too much deaths. I don't know what to do. Before I can move forward, you know, many a times we have this perception that if you have a good Iman, if you have a good faith, you won't be, you won't have this mental health issues. Many a times we have this uh, understanding. You cannot have more faith than Abu Umama. <laughs> you cannot have more faith, more Iman than the Sahaba. Even they are going through these diseases. So, but what he did, he seek counsel from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. So he says, too much anxiety, too much stress. I'm worried for myself and too much deaths. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, Then Rasulullah says, should I not tell you one dua? If you will ask that dua, 
every morning and every evening you were going to see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of your worry and pay your debts should I tell you that dua obviously Abu Umam is struggling with that he will say just tell, tell me that dua and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell this dua which is the most popular dua subhanallah then he says the dua Abu Mama asked this Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal huzn and they are beautiful phrases of the dua first phrase is oh Allah protect me I seek your refuge from worry and from sadness and then Rasulullah says a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal kasal oh Allah please protect me I seek your refuge from being incapable and from being lazy person I'll come to this later and then Rasulullah asked Abu Mama also make dua Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-jubni wal bukhl oh Allah please protect me I seek your refuge from being coward and from miserliness and then Rasulullah says also ask this dua sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a'udhu bika min ghalabat al-dayni wa qahr al-rijal oh Allah please protect me I seek your refuge from being overwhelmed by death and the tyranny of men May Allah protect all of us from these things. Ameen, Ya Rab. One interesting thing about this dua, which is connected to our topic of laziness, is that Rasulullah when he was telling Abu Mama to ask this dua, he connected laziness, al-kasal, with al-ajz, which is incapability. He connected laziness with incapability. Al-kasal and al-ajz came together. And obviously, this is not by accident. This have to have some wisdom. Why Rasulullah did that? And if you reflect, if you ponder, you will going to get the answer why he did that. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, Allah, please protect me from being incapable and from being lazy. What does it mean? Basically, it's actually two sides of the same coin. What is incapability? Al-ajz, incapability. Incapability is when you have, when you have desire to do something, but you don't have means, you don't have resources. And laziness is when you have means. But you don't have desires. But you don't have desires. That is laziness. And that is why Rasulullah is asking, I seek your refuge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from being in the state where I have means but no desire, or where I have desire but no means. So give me the ability to do things where I have means and I have desires to do things. Many times this will happen. I want to study, I want to do a master's. Maybe I'm not financially equipped. Some people are financially equipped, but they are lazy. So Rasulullah Sallam doesn't want to be in any of those estate. So Rasulullah is asking dua, Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min al-ajzi wal kasal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from being in the state of incapability and from being in the state of laziness. Ameen Ya Rab. Now about last two things inshallah, kinds of laziness. As our scholars have explained this. And you will see this from a psychological standpoint also confirming this. First, is obviously physical laziness as I said. Physical laziness is the commonly understood laziness. Al-Kaslul Badan doesn't want to move around. You don't want to work out. Even if you have gym membership, you don't want to go because you are physically lazy. Um, usually this laziness is very costly, medically speaking, because it will show up when you are physically lazy in 40s and 50s and 60s. May Allah SWT give us good health. At that time, it will show up. So that's physical laziness. But second is al kasr al aql mental laziness. You don't want to think. You will let someone else to do the thinking part for you. Some people will go constantly late in their work, late in the weddings, late in the salah, even though they are chilling at home. It's not that they are doing something important. That's laziness from uh, intellectual or mental, mental perspective. Then third is religious laziness. Not willing to pray, just like Allah mentioned in Quran. Or being too lazy in the prayer even if you are praying, not focusing on the prayer. Not willing to learn more or to memorize more Quran. There are some brothers and sisters, mashallah, they have memorized so much in the last few months. I know one sister, I don't want to embarrass her because she said, do not disclose my name. She's a dentist practicing right now, four kids, family. And ever since the pandemic started from March until Last week I spoke with her. She memorized Suratul Baqarah and Surah Al Imran. Practicing dentist, four kids. What excuse you have? Subhanallah. And then some people you will see that they are so religiously lazy that 15 years ago they memorized Suratul Falak and Surah Nas 
And today they are still on Surah Al-Farq and Surah Al-Nas. Again, I'm not being judgmental, but raise your bar. You came in this country, you were staying as a tenant, and then you bought your own house. All the other things you are increasing your bar. Why, why, why you are not increasing the bar in religious sense? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to do that. Ameen, Ya Rab. Similarly, learning Arabic, taking ilm courses. We have so many classes, subhanAllah. Take benefit of that. Don't become religiously lazy. That is not for me. Fourth kind of laziness is a family laziness. This is also very important. This actually exposes our hypocrisy. Some people, and this by the way goes both for parents and for kids. Some people are extremely active when it comes to helping someone in community. You are known for your that attitude. MashaAllah, that brother in the masjid, that sister in the masjid. And may Allah reward you for that. Ameen, Ya Rab. They are so energetic. They have time for everyone except their own family. But when their own family will ask them, Abba, can we do this together? Oh, no, Abba is too tired. And when Abba will ask, the parents will ask the kids, let's go to the uncle's house. Let's just spend some time together. Kids will say, ah, I'm too tired. And at the same time, your friend will text you, let's go out to chill. And you will say, okay, I'm coming. So basically, it's a family laziness. You are lazy for some people, but you're not lazy for other people. And then there's a community laziness, which starts with individual laziness. That it will affect your mind, community laziness, that we don't want to do big things as a community. And it all, always stems from an individual laziness. You, no one wants to go to attend the board meetings or volunteer meetings. And at the end of the day, those volunteer meetings won't happen. Because just like you were thinking, oh, I won't go, so it won't matter. Other people will show up. Everyone was thinking like that. So this is community laziness. But now how to cure that? That's, that's the important thing. We all know that we have different phases in life where we will be lazy. How to cure this from an Islamic perspective? So first thing is to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah is giving us dua. Remember the dua he gave to Abu Umama? So that's the first thing we need to do. Ask this dua. Oh Allah, please protect me from being lazy. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kasl. Ask this dua all the time. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-kasl. Ameen, Ya Rabb. Second, and by the way, if Rasulullah is seeking refuge from something, if Rasulullah is seeking protection of Allah from something, it means it's dangerous. It means it's dangerous. We have limited time in life, limited time in dunya. What are we? Just number of hours. And every single day, those number of hours are decreasing. That's human life. We have limited time to do things in this life, to prove a point to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most miserable person, metaphorically speaking, is a person who is being lazy and who is wasting his time, subhanAllah. Second thing we can do apart from dua, apart from dua, because if you will ask dua, Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min al-kasl, and you are sitting on couch and using social media without any purpose, you are not acting on what you are asking. So second thing, bringing into action, what are those practical things we can do apart from the dua, which is first and foremost, sleep on time, sleep on time. You remember that hadith where shaitan will come and put the nods. If you are sleeping at 3 a.m. and if fajr is at 5, shaitan will put 3 nods and you yourself have put 10 nods. <laughs> because you are putting yourself in trouble, your fajr is in trouble and your entire day will be messed up then. And subhanAllah, I'm, I'm not the ideal person to say this because when I was a student in my college life, I used to sleep after Fajr. This was a mob mentality among these students. You need to make in a schedule. I'll tell you something interesting. SubhanAllah, four minutes remaining. The most successful people in US, successful in materialistic world. When they are saying successful, it's not about getting Jannah. When we as a Muslim say successful, it means Getting Jannah and protection from hell. Remember this, extremely important. A poor person in our community can be successful and a, su a rich person can be a loser based on their destination. But when they say successful, I'm saying in their language. They say successful people in the US, whether you say Mark Zuckerberg or whatever, it's success in the materialistic world. Most of them wake up early in the morning, around 4 a.m. And most of them try to do the things before even the entire world wakes up. Because you have the energy. Psychologists say first hour in the morning is a golden hour where we all Muslims are sleeping. <laughs> so again, back in the day, sleep early and sleep less. Sleep less. Whatever your sleep schedule, six, seven, eight hours, don't sleep for 10, 11 hours. One famous scholar, Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, he wrote a book, Madaraj al Salikin, who is a Sharaf Manazil al Sa'irin. He actually says about sleeping more. He says, Fa'innahu yumitul qalb. 
When you sleep more, your heart dies. And you are wasting your time. And and it will give you, it will make you lazy. Don't sleep more. Then third thing we can do, practically speaking, eat healthy, eat limited, because Rasulullah said in many hadiths, and even work out. You don't necessarily have to go to gym. 30 minute walk, run, whatever you can work out at home. That will going to increase the blood flow and uh, blood flow and energy level will going to um, uh, keep uh, uh, rotating, inshallah. Uh, then think big and have the objective in life. I have seen subhanAllah people wake up in the weekend, Saturday morning, and they don't have anything to do. If you are, if you are spending your weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and you don't have anything to do, it means you will become a lazy person. Spend some time to create a schedule. This weekend will come, I will do this. This weekend will come, I will do this. So that way you will, you won't even have option to becoming a lazy person. Don't spend time with lazy people. If there are people who are wasting your time, if there are people who are asking you to waste your time in the foolish activities, just try to limit that relationship with those people. And try to spend time with those people who have high aspirations. So they can inspire you to actually achieve something big in the life, inshallah. Don't waste your time. Live your passion. There are so many things. But I will conclude with this dua, inshallah. That may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us barakah in time. And protect us all from being lazy. Ameen, ya Rabb. Allah mansuri al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allah mahzul man khazal adina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa la raja'ala ma'ahum. Allahumma la tada'ala zamman illa ghafarta. Wa la hamman illa farrajta. Wa la daynan illa qadayta. Wa la hajata min hawaij dunya wa al-akhara illa qadayta. Haya arham al-rahimin. Wa la maridan illa shafayta. Wa la maytan illa rahimta. Wa la dalan illa hadayta. Arham al-rahimin. Aqulu qawli haza. Wa astagfirullah li balakum wa li sa'ir al-Muslimin al-Muslimat faqim al-Salaam. Allah. Oh,